Welcome back. A new poll released moments ago is revealing new insights into younger voters ahead of next year's election. The Harvard Youth Poll shares several key findings, including fewer young Americans plan to vote in 2024, with most of the decline coming from young Republicans and independents. President Biden's advantage with younger voters narrows when potential independent candidates are introduced, like RFK Jr., Joe Manchin, and Cornell West. And with support for abortion access increasing over the last decade, Americans who support a woman's right to choose are more likely to vote on abortion ballot measures. Joining us now, Director of Polling at the Institute of Politics at Harvard University, John Della Volpe. He's an MSNBC contributor and the author of the book entitled Fight, How Gen Z is Channeling Their Fear and Passion to Save America, which is out now in paperback. It's great to have you to talk about this, which was just out, these, these polls you did. Um, overall, what are you finding about sort of the, the, the state of mind of the younger electorate? Yeah, thanks again, Meek and Joe, for having me again. You know, this is an opportunity we had to speak to a couple thousand young Americans. There's been a lot of conversation in the last month or so based looking at crosstabs of a couple of hundred young Americans. And we're seeing three big things. The first of which is President Biden is in solid shape, I'd say, in a two-way matchup against President Trump today, one. The second thing is, as you can see, it gets much more complicated with multiple candidates, independent candidates in the field, specifically uh, Bobby Kennedy, too. And the third thing is is, as you can see, as you just noted, abortion continues to be an incredibly important issue in the post dobbs environment. And we see that folks who align with the pro-choice movement are far more likely to engage, not just politically, but actually deriving where they choose to live when they grow up, when they, when they, um, when they are ready to, to move and settle down in a career. So, John, let's look at some of these specifics here on, on our first graphic, and this is that fewer um, 18 to 29-year-olds plan to vote this time around. That's the fear of the Biden campaign, which is not that they're going to leap to Donald Trump, but that they just don't show up at all. So as you look inside here, it is true that more Republicans and independents say they won't vote. So is the Biden White House. Should they be feeling good this morning that at least Democrats, young Democrats, say they're going to go out and vote? Well, that's certainly good news, Willie. But um, remember, there are more independents today than there were four years ago. So people are disassociating with the Democratic Party, specifically young um, people of color, young African-Americans and young Hispanics. Double digit decreases in the number of young people who align with the Democratic Party today relative to four years ago. We, we spent a lot of time on this set and others really talking about voter suppression for good reason. This is about voter depression. And I think it's a it's a calculated campaign from the far right to depress young people's turnout in politics. Right. They're depressed about views of government. They're depressed about the views of both parties. And we can see the effect, I think, in the rise of cynicism in the in the at this point a year out, they're less likely to participate in, in, in the campaign. And John, I think the Biden campaign hopes that they say, look, we're 11 months out that these young voters will be energized next summer, say, when they start to think about what's at stake if Donald Trump becomes president again if abortion rights continue to be rolled back. Things right. Like that. They feel like that'll crystallize the choice once it's actually a choice that it's A or B. And, you know, your poll in here suggests that young people think that Donald Trump would do better handling the Israel-Hamas war than perhaps Joe Biden by 29 to 25 percent. Let's also remember, of course, some of this might be fueled by young voters, you mean Muslim voters. Donald Trump over the weekend just said he's going to bring back his Muslim ban. So once yeah. voters start paying attention, these numbers could change. Yeah, John, John, and I think that particular number is less about Donald Trump's position and more about the plurality of young people who don't trust either one at this point to handle Israel Hamas. I don't think it's a necessarily a big endorsement for Trump, as, as we said, that this is really about Biden versus the other, and we have a, a solid, undecided, and specifically on issue over issue over issue, they want to see more. They want to see that democracy works, and they want to see that their vote mattered um, in 2020 with real evidence. So we talked about the issue of abortion, one of your key findings here. Pro-choice Americans more likely to vote on abortion ballot measures. If there's something on the ballot in their state, they'll go out and then vote 
uh, ideally, ideally vote for candidates as well. Yeah, we had a series of, we updated a series of questions on abortion generally. All this is available on our website, of course. We see, a, we see a eight point increase over the last four or five years in terms of overall support of abortion access generally. And when we ask people if there were a referendum or a ballot measure in your state, how likely would you be to participate? And you can see that the pro-choice group is far more likely than, um, than other people to say they'll turn out on a local issue. Yeah, so abort two-thirds, nearly two-thirds of young Americans say legal access to reproductive health care, including abortion, is important when choosing where they live. So obviously the issue of abortion is going to be important here. Just to go back quickly, something we we're talking about, about third-party yeah. candidates. When you look at the way the vote gets split, when you throw in the third party, RFK Jr., Cornell West, maybe Joe Manchin as well, how significant is that? And what are young voters saying about being fed up, frankly, with the two parties that they've been offered? Listen, Will, as we, as we said, we've got this increasing level of folks who self-identify as independent. They are by far the least likely to vote. That's why we're seeing a decrease in the number of African-Americans and Hispanics less likely to vote one, even, even college students as well. And, and when, we, when we see a two-way race, it looks, looks like 2020. It looks fairly normal in terms of the, what would you expect from younger people. But when you enter Cornell West, potential in Manchin, and Kennedy, Biden's lead goes from 11 points to four points among everybody. It goes from 15 to eight among registered voters. And we know what happened in Wisconsin in 2016 as well. And the news of this poll, I think, is regardless of the independent third party candidate, they take more from Biden's side among young voters than the Trump side, specifically Bobby Kennedy. And you were telling, yeah, that the, some of these young voters you talked to were bringing up unsolicited the name of RFK Jr., what do they think about him? What do they say about him? Why do they like him if they do? Well, they think that he's different th than the other two parties at this point, right? That's what they think. And, and, and he is clearly a conspiracy theorist, but he's also, I think, a, 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 a political tactician who understands the vulnerabilities in the electorate, the vulnerabilities within the Democratic Party, and is aiming his message directly at them. If you don't have a place in either party, mm -hmm. he's saying, look at me. And at this point, it's a year out, people are looking at him. It's dangerous, I think, for our democracy. Is is there a sense as to why young Democrats would be interested in Robert Kennedy Jr. besides the, the last name? I mean, he's a vaccine conspiracy theorist. He holds some like really out there views on a number of positions. Uh, certainly those in the Biden camp that I talked to, yes, they're worried about Cornell West. They're worried about Jill Stein. They're worried about Joe Manchin. But they also think most of those are going to drop out because they don't want to be seen as helping elect Trump. Kennedy, they have less of a feel over. Some of them might think he might hurt Trump more. But your findings disagree? Uh, within this cohort, absolutely. And, and Jonathan, I also looked at a variety of, of data points of the last several years. And, and every youth, every electorate, we have a different composition of the youth vote. The 18 to 24 year old young men, they are far more likely to identify as conservative or Republican mm. yeah. than the young men um, uh, just a cycle ago. This is the post COVID Joe Rogan barstool sports mm. um, cohort here. And, and that's a, a different kind of voter than we saw just four years ago. Director of Polling at the Institute of wow. Politics at Harvard University, John Delavolpe. So interesting. This is going to be pivotal in this election. John, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.